Thank you for uh, joining me today on the webinar for Miro's uh, latest version of Solve. Um, quick introduction, Solve 6.5 as its predecessors is a computer simulation software designed for harmonic analysis with adjustable speed drive applications. Uh, initially, I will do a quick introduction to the user interface uh, for those that are not proficient in the use of Solve, but this seminar has been prepared to demonstrate new features and improved report capabilities of this powerful tool. Before the end, we will have a brief uh, session for questions. <coughs> new features include the ability to calculate power losses and energy efficiency uh, also uh, the ability to run dual scenarios. A second operating scenario can be chosen where virtually any number of one-line parameters can be changed to compare. For example, VFDs with AC line reactors can be compared with VFDs with uh, the linear AUHF. Uh, operating info that includes the cost of uh, electricity and runtime can be entered for energy analysis. Uh, report generation is improved and simplified. The simulation summary report combines several reports in one PDF document, including one-line parameters, uh, one-line diagram, waveforms and spectrums, IEEE uh, standard 519 compliance report, and harmonics distortion reports. Uh, comparison and energy analysis report compares uh, various performance parameters of two simulation scenarios. This can be used to help justify the linear UHF on the harmonic mitigation performance and energy savings. Uh, as a separate, we added also telephone interference report. Uh, examples today uh, will include the linear UHF versus 18 volts. Uh, we will demonstrate how 18 volts drives uh, performance drops off with even low levels of voltage imbalance and voltage distortion. VFD with the linear AUHF versus VFD with AC LAN reactor. We will show that energy savings can result when power system transformers and cables are included. And we will demonstrate influence of the source impedance on harmonic distortion in generator versus utility application. First, we will uh, initiate solve software and set up the power system parameters for the simulation. So I will start solve now. <clears throat> from the opening screen, we can select a new simulation or open a safe simulation from previous analysis. So after selecting a new uh, new simulation, project information can be uh, can be entered. So rather than type this information now, I will click OK. Uh, put this in a full screen and demonstrate how to load an existing simulation file. So from the top menu uh, bar, selecting file and going to open option, I can select a uh, previously saved file. And uh, previously saved solve files uh, will have extension SLV. So I select and open. And project information dialog appears for any changes if required. After selecting OK, the one-line diagram window is active. You can save your file by selecting File and selecting Save or Save As. Uh, other features on the top menu bar include Project, uh, which allows to add second scenario uh, and change operating info. Um, Settings, which allows you to select between imperial or matic units, and simulation and help where you will uh, find the user guide. Uh, other menu features are not active until we run the simulation. Uh, the simulation parameters can be entered in any order. Uh, in this example, I will begin with the source. So moving the cursor over the source symbol and clicking the left mouse button brings up the selection window uh, for the source data. We can choose uh, our system frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, and apply pre-existing source conditions such as background voltage distortion and line voltage imbalance. We have allowed for five major harmonics components for source voltage distortion. So by sliding each uh, 
harmonic component, uh, we can provide uh, source uh, uh, voltage distortion levels as required. In similar manner, we can apply voltage voltage imbalance. At this time, I will not select any pre-existing conditions. So after choosing 60 Hz, uh, I click OK. Moving our cursor uh, to the right of the source uh, brings uh, the uh, utility transformer. Uh, moving the mouse uh, over, uh, over above the line uh, shows the yellow mark for the utility transformer below the line uh, for the generator. Um, with the utility transformer highlighted, uh, I click to open uh, utility transformer uh, parameters. Uh, there are three ways to define the utility transformer. Most often, you will enter transformer rating uh, uh, in KVA and percent impedance. But when this is unavailable, the utility is uh, fault level either in MVA or short circuit current in kilo amps can be entered instead. For this simulation, I'm using short circuit current uh, 2.5 kA and secondary voltage 13.8 uh, kilovolts. If the utility information is not available, a simulation can be performed without entering the source information. Uh, to enter cable information, simply click the cable uh, symbol. Uh, cable includes the length cable uh, of the cable, uh, conductor size, and number of conductors per phase. In this simulation, I'm using 300 feet. Uh, one conductor per phase of two odd uh, cable. After uh, clicking OK, the cable information appears on the single line. If we prefer to be working in metric cable sizes instead of imperial, this can be changed by uh, changing settings and switching to, to metric. Uh, you can see that cable size changes to millimeter uh, and the length uh, to meters uh, on the single line. Now when I click the cable symbol again, I can select uh, metric conductor sizes. Uh, I'm working with uh, imperial units, so I will switch back to uh, settings to imperial. And imperial units appears on the single line. Uh, if cable information is unknown, it does not need to be entered. Uh, running simulation without cable information will result in conservative values of current THD. Uh, therefore, for this simulation, I will remove uh, the cable from, from the simulation. Power factor correction capacitors uh, allows to enter uh, capacitor bank values in k bars and including a detuning reactor in series uh, if we wish. Uh, we will forego uh, power factor correction capacitors uh, for this example and move downstream to the user transformer. Clicking the user transformer allows us to enter information in much the same manner as the utility transformer. We can enter a KVA rating in percent and percent impedance and the secondary voltage. Or we can enter fault level uh, or short circuit current if that information is uh, unknown. Additionally, we have a selection of efficiency and uh, the current loss in, uh, in uh, percent of the total losses. And the transformer efficiency is important for accurate energy analysis. On the right side of the one-line diagram, we can enter load information. Uh, we have uh, up to nine branches of non new loads uh, that can be entered. One separate branch is for the total of linear load, uh, which for harmonic simulation can be grouped together. If linear loads are to be included in the simulation, click the first branch uh, to enter the linear load, uh, the linear load component in kilowatts, and lagging displacement power factor or, or the unity. In this example, I'm using 50 kilowatt and 0.96 uh, displacement power factor. So I click OK. And to enter VFT load, uh, move the cursor uh, over, over the cable or, break, uh, cable or breaker symbol. 
and select the drive system input data for parameters selection. Uh, information can be entered in any order. So let's start by selecting the motor rating in horsepower or kilowatts. Um, in this example, I'm using uh, 900 horsepower uh, motor. Uh, next, let's uh, select the desired uh, load level. Uh, normally, simulations will be done at full load since that will result in the highest level of harmonic voltage distortion, but any other value uh, for low level can be under if required. So I am leaving us 100%. In the drive system uh, section, uh, a choice of seven different non-union VFD loads are available. Uh, simple 6 pulse VFD, 6 pulse VFD with the linear advanced universal harmonic filter, three types of multiple systems, uh, thyristor controlled DC drive, and DC drive with linear AUHF. To demonstrate that the use of simple 6 pulse VFDs will often result in harmonic distortion that will not meet recommended standards, such as IEEE 519, our first simulation will be VFD, uh, VFD only. Many VFDs come equipped with either AC input line reactor or DC link choke. Uh, these values can be entered either in percent impedance or milli Henry value. So in this example, I am using 3% AC line reactor. Uh, for the VFDs, this is molding capacitor uh, bank. A default value is provided. Uh, so in this example, I'm using 3% uh, reactor and default molding uh, capacitor. Uh, cable selection, uh, if a uh, feeder cable uh, uh, is required for the simulation, just click the cable. Uh, selection button and as before uh, cable run, run conductor size and number of conductor per phase. Uh, I will remove the cable from the simulation and in the same manner uh, transformer rating. So for this simple uh, calculation we can also add uh, comments if we wish. Uh, I will leave this field empty for now. And um, once our loads are defined, we can run the simulation and see how it performs. And depending on the model complexity, this might take a few seconds uh, while uh, the program resolves a set of differential equations. This model was uh, uh, very simple, so uh, it was calculated quickly. Uh, so after the calculation has finished, uh, simulation results are provided on one line diagram at each branch. Uh, at the distribution panel and at the secondaries of the user transformer which is defined as PCC1 and the utility transformer or the generator which is defined as PCC2. The true power of solve is in the extensive amount of information available for analysis after the simulation. So let's begin with the waveform and spectrum graphs. So I select waveform and spectrum and by selecting that, I can choose uh, PCC number two. And we can view waveforms and spectrums at the utility transformer secondary. Moving the cursor <coughs> on the harmonic spectrum graph, a selection hand appears, indicating it, it can be selected. So by clicking into this area, either voltage uh, spectrum or current spectrum, I can click and another window opens with individual harmonic distortion results. And this information can be exported to Excel. If I click uh, on Excel, spreadsheet should, uh, uh, should open if it's installed. That's right. Or it can be printed by using print screen. So let me go back. We can view similar graphs for user transformers, secondary, uh, PCC1, and distribution panel. Uh, simulation 
uh, report can be viewed by selecting reports. Uh, we have three options available. Uh, the simulation summary report provides all the relevant information on the simulation. Uh, comparison and energy report provides summary information on differences between two scenarios. I will demonstrate this later. And the telephone interference uh, report uh, that shows IT product and telephone interference factor calculations according to the IEEE 519 table uh, 11.4. So I go back and uh, by clicking the simulation summary report the report PDF is generated. It takes a few seconds, so just, just wait. I'll open uh, on. I will change view to the full page. So on the first few pages, uh, we get simulation parameter summary. Uh, next is the single line diagram. And then uh, we have uh, waveforms and spectrums for PCC1 and PCC2. On page 6, uh, we get the summary compliance uh, with IEEE 519, which indicates whether we pass or fail on harmonic limits. Uh, we can see that in this example, we fail meeting harmonic limits at both points of common coupling. And the last two pages report are results for individual harmonic components. So I close this report for now. Now that we have completed a simulation of VFD without harmonic treatment, let's add the linear value HF filter to the VFD to see what the performance we can get with it. All we need to do is to click the breaker symbol uh, on the low branch and change the drive system from the pull down uh, list to select linear array OHF. I click OK. Now we can see the AUHF box up here on the low branch and we are ready to run the simulation. After calculation is done we can see uh, current distortion ITHD at the VFD load branch has dropped dramatically to 5.8%. Uh, also, the current distortion and water distortion at the upstream uh, points has been reversed as well. For example, at the PCC1, uh, uh, voltage THD is 2.4% and the current THD is 5.5%. Selecting reports and simulation summary report uh, when the report is generated, we can go to uh, compliance report on page 6. Uh, let me make this full page. You can see uh, that now we meet the requirements for both voltage and current distortion at uh, both uh, point of common copy things. We can continue our analysis uh, by selecting different form of harmonic treatment and using a second scenario option. To do that, we select project and create scenarios. And one, uh, one line diagram for scenario B appears active uh, with all settings from previous simulation. Uh, to demonstrate multiple drive system performance, let's change the drive system input data and change uh, the drive system to 18 volts uh, from the drop down. I click OK and run the simulation. Now with the ability of creating two scenarios, we can compare and do energy analysis for the two proposed solution. Uh, to view uh, the comparison energy analysis, we select reports, and now comparison energy report is active. So I can generate that report. Takes a minute. Uh, 
let me make this a full page view. This report shows the difference between uh, two selected scenarios with energy usage calculations. Uh, the second uh, column is the linear AUHF scenario A. Uh, third column is scenario B, uh, 18 poles, and fourth column is the difference between the two, two solutions. Uh, at the PCC2 section, Either. At the PCC2 section, we can see that the performance is quite good with both methods of harmonic treatment, but energy consumption and energy cost are different in favor of the linear OHF in scenario A. Uh, we should know that the default conditions are perfectly balanced three-phase voltages with no pre-existing voltage distortion. This seldom exists in the real world, so let's apply some pre-existing conditions. So I'm closing this report, moving cursor to the source, and opening the source data uh, to, to apply uh, some uh, line voltage imbalance. In many industrial systems, it's common to measure 1.5 to 3% of voltage phase imbalance, so let's have apply uh, 1.5 uh, line voltage imbalance for this uh, example. So I move uh, the cursor and click OK. Uh, we can notice on the single line uh, uh, line voltage imbalance 1.5 percent information appeared. So now we can run the simulation. So looking at the uh, PCC number one and number two results, we can see that now 18 pulse drive system performance dropped off significantly. ITHD exceeds 15% actually. Uh, viewing the simulation summary report, uh, let's generate that and going to page six. Page six for compliance with IEEE 519 shows that we fail to meet the required harmonic limits with this solution under a small voltage imbalance. So I close this for now. Uh, Pre-existing voltage distortion also can cause degradation in harmonic mitigation of the performance. So using the source selection uh, window, uh, I put some uh, distortion uh, voltage distortion percent for fifth. I will put some different levels, different harmonics. Okay, uh, so I have voltage and distortion applied. I click OK and I can now run the simulation. Now, after the simulation is finished, we can see that 18 volt VFD performance is degraded even further. ITHD is now 17%. Uh, to compare this performance against the linear under pre-existing conditions, we can switch to scenario A and change the source conditions. So I move cursor to the button, switch to scenario A, and select source and apply voltage distortion and voltage imbalance accordingly. I try to use the same values as for previous scenario. This was 1%. Yeah, 2.75 and 1.5% for voltage imbalance. So I click OK. And now I can run the simulation.
performance is much better than with 18 poles VFDs. And viewing the simulation summary report when it's generated, going to page 6 for compliance. Yes, so on page 6 we can find that we still meet all the required harmonic limits even with these pre-existing conditions. So um, having uh, two scenarios calculated, we can view the comparison energy report to compare. So we will open that report as well. And at the PCC number 2 section, uh, we can see that harmonic mitigation performance is much better with the meter solution uh, on, on this report as well. Um, so I showed uh, how 18 pulse performance drops off with even low levels of voltage imbalance and voltage uh, background distortion. In next example, I will demonstrate that energy savings can result with the application of the linear UHF. Uh, when transformers are, and cables are included. So I will open another file that I have prepared. Number two. And cables and drive transformers are included uh, in the simulation. Also 5% AC line reactors are entered for all VDFDs. For more accurate energy analysis, we can change the operating info in the main menu project. So operating info allows uh, changing electricity rate and runtime as according to the actual information. We can change the cur uh, currency to US dollars, consumption rate to let's say uh, 10 cents, and demand uh, $10 per, per month. Runtime would be, uh, let's say, 12 hours per day for 260 days, which is 3,120 uh, hours per year. Um, actually, I just uh, noticed there is a, obviously a typo in that label here. Uh, it should be hours per year, not kilowatt hours per year. I click OK. It is important that any uh, operating info changes must be done before running the simulation. Otherwise, we would have to create a new simulation or use the second scenario option uh, for changes in the operating info to be applied. So uh, when operating info is updated, we can run the simulation uh, for the first scenario. Uh, once simulation is completed, we can view results for this scenario on the one-line diagram and the simulation summary report. Uh, but uh, let's create a second UHF project, create scenarios. Uh, now a new one-line diagram for scenario B is open, so I click uh, branch and breaker symbol in the drive system and switch uh, the drive systems to have the linear AUHF. Switching from VAT only to linear. So I select OK and I repeat this step for each branch load. Click OK. The linear AUHF. So with all drive showing AUHF box, we can run the simulation now. So after a few seconds, when calculations are completed, we can view results for this scenario and compare it with the previous one by selecting reports and comparison and energy report. Looking at the PCC number two section, and 
and energy consumption and energy cost, we can see the significant annual cost saving can be provided with the linear HF, AUHF solution. The fourth column uh, shows a negative difference of above $1,700 uh, per year. Negative sign indicates that scenario B has a lower number than scenario A, and scenario A was before the linear AUHF was applied. So obviously if we set the operating runtime for 24 hours for 365 days in a year, the savings will be uh, even higher. I believe now you are familiar with uh, two scenarios and how to do energy analysis. So in next example, I will demonstrate what effect a power system source impedance will have on the current and voltage harmonic distortion that nonlinear loads create on the power system. So I open uh, a third file. And in this case, uh, we do simulation of three six poles VFDs with 3% AC line reactors, 1800 horsepower in total, plus some linear loads. Uh, the 600 horsepower actually loading is 90%. Uh, this load is supplied by the uh, 3750 kVA uh, utility transformer, which is considered a stiff source with 5% impedance and the secondary voltage 600 volts. So I run the simulation and after calculations are finished, each drive uh, load branch draws current with above 31% THD and the voltage distortion in the system is below 4%. Uh, please note uh, that the ratio of short circuit current to the load current, uh, ISC uh, to I load, is about 50 in this case. Uh, so let's create a second scenario, changing the source utility transformer to generator with typical uh, subtransient reactance of 16 so I do that, rating of 2500 kVA, and run the simulation. Uh, the current distortion in each uh, branch load uh, is in range uh, of 22%, it's uh, lower in this case, but the voltage distortion is affected with a very high VTHD exceeding 12%. And note that uh, the ratio of short circuit current to the load current uh, is about 10. So now to continue our analysis, let's go back to scenario A and change the utility transformer size to 2000 kVA. Click OK with the same uh, per unit impedance. So I run the simulation. So even with the lower impedance of the uh, utility supply, the voltage distortion increases substantially when the transformer size is decreased to 2000 kVA. And VTHD in this case exceeds uh, its 6.5%. Uh, uh, which is higher than commonly accepted 5% limit. Note that we didn't change the per unit impedance value, but by decreasing the size of the supply transformer, we affected the short circuit capacity of the system. And the short circuit current to the load current ratio uh, from about 50 was lowered to about 26. Therefore, uh, it is important that the actual source impedance and the ratio of short circuit capability current to load current is taken into account when doing harmonic analysis. So by uh, this example, I conclude uh, our solved tutorial. Thank you for your time. And